Now, while most people enjoy computer games, one simple sport is making a big comeback in rural America. It's called marbles. Reporter Mike Osborne recently visited the hill country between the states of Kentucky and Tennessee, where spin is in. On a warm late summer Saturday morning in the tiny community of Etoil, Kentucky, a small crowd gathers under a shade tree to watch a game of marbles. The playing field is a flat piece of old carpet measuring roughly six meters on a side. Two two-man teams are playing a game called Tennessee Square. Getting down on hands and knees, they fire grape-sized stone marbles from between the thumb and forefinger with tremendous force. Their goal is to earn points by striking much larger walnut-sized marbles, knocking them out of the square. Marbles enthusiast Buck Hoochin says there used to be a lot of marbles courts in the area, but now only a few are left. The old timers before me were playing in their backyards here, I know 60 years ago. We played different games, but this game here we're playing today is it came up in the 30s. Most of those still playing today are older men, many in their 70s and 80s. Some fear the game may soon die out. Thank you for shot. But just across the state line in Clay County, Tennessee, Brian Cherry is introducing the game to a new generation by coaching Marbles teams in schools. Most time the kids really get, really get into it at the age of about 10. From 10 to 14 they really start to develop their power and their spin better. Standing Stone State Park in nearby Hillam, Tennessee is also helping preserve traditional marbles play. For more than 30 years the park has sponsored a national tournament for the marbles game called Rolly Hole. Ranger Sean Hughes calls it the king of marble games. If you consider marble games kind of like chess and checkers, um, all the other mar marble games would be like checkers and rolly hole would be like chess. It's quite strategic. Not only do you have to be able to make shots, but the strategy is almost probably more important than the shot making. A good player can shoot a marble with such force that even the best marbles are soon chipped or cracked. Many serious competitors make their own marbles. Timothy Walton makes his out of a local variety of milky quartz. Pick it up out of a creek, get around a, where water's been, where rivers, creeks, or uh, around lake beds, dried lake beds is a good place. Sandbars in the river where the rivers drop down, you know, wore stones into the river. Cut that piece of stone into an inch diameter or, or inch square, and then go into the process of, of rough cutting it with a diamond cut wheel, end of grinding it down to get the corners just fairly round. And that's just a repeat process. Both making and playing marbles are skills that take time and determination to develop. Ranger Sean Hughes says it would be a shame to see them lost. It's, um, you know, it's used to be a, a sport played on every playground, school ground, at home, and uh, it's got lost throughout the years. We don't want marbles to die. Reporting for VOA from the Marbles Courts at Standing Stone State Park in Hillam, Tennessee, I'm Mike Osborne. And I played this game as a kid, I assure you.